Every year, the officers and crew of the U.S. Navy destroyer Point Cruise get together for a reunion. It's a time for reminiscing, a chance to reestablish friendships made during the Korean War, and, most importantly, an opportunity to reflect on a miracle that touched the lives of a thousand men. It was 1953. The war in Korea was near its end, and the ship, the USS Point Cruise, was scheduled to sail to Hong Kong. At the last moment, it was held back in Seoul, South Korea, to await further orders. During that wait, the crew of the Point Cruise would engage in one final mission, perhaps the most important of all. On July 11th, an orderly named George took a break from his duties at the Army Dispensary. He heard a strange noise coming from the papers surrounding a trash can. When he went to investigate, he got the surprise of his life. It was a baby, a little boy, thrown away like a piece of garbage and left to die. The orderly rushed the baby to the only place where he knew to get help, the Star of the Sea Children's Home, run by a Catholic nun, Sister Philomena. One look at the starving child and the sister's heart sank. The infant was half Korean and half Caucasian. Orphanages were already overflowing with full-blooded Korean children whose parents had been killed in the war, and the attitude toward children of mixed races was alarming. There was little chance that they would be adopted or even survive. They were shunned, left unfed and unattended, and even murdered. Sister Philomena knew it would take a miracle for this abandoned baby to survive. The only hope lay with the American troops. She sent word of this hopeless situation to Father Edward O. Riley, the naval chaplain on board the USS Point Cruise. Father Riley wasted no time in consulting with the ship's captain, John T. Hayward. What are the chances of the baby being adopted by a Korean family? None, and if he does survive, he won't have a very pleasant life. The father explained that the child had little chance of even surviving. Already, the Koreans working in the orphanage were refusing to feed the baby or change its diapers. Get him aboard the Point Cruise, and let's get him healthy. Going against strict Navy regulations, the captain issued the command to bring the baby on board. It's an emergency. At the same time, Dr. Hugh Keenan, a naval surgeon from another ship, paid a visit to the orphanage, and Sister Philomena showed him the abandoned child. Would you like to hold him? Yes, Sister Philomena hold. instantly felt the connection between this man and the child. Perhaps here was another chance for the baby to survive, and she took it. Um, would you be interested in adopting this baby? Dr. Keenan and his wife had been trying unsuccessfully to have a child of their own, and now, here in his arms, was what they had always dreamed of. Child. Yes, <laughs> yes, I would, I would love to. That's wonderful. The commander of Dr. Keenan's ship was not as understanding as Captain Hayward about bringing a baby on board. He refused to bend regulations. The point crews would take up that part of the mission. And when Father Riley finally brought the little boy on board, the ship and crew were ready. Claude Bonner was there. The nursery was actually in sick bay. We fashioned a crib out of a bomb crate. And we took the sheets off of the officer's bed and made diapers. Somehow or another, we came up with baby bottles. They named the baby George Cruz. George for the orderly who found him, and Cruz for the Point Cruise, the ship that was to be his new home. While every man on board would have enjoyed caring for George, only a handful were given the opportunity. Had a little quiz that you had to go through, and one of them was is you had to know how to hold a baby, how to pick them up, how to feed a baby, and how to change a diaper. And if you couldn't fold a three-cornered diaper, you didn't get it. I was one of the fortunate ones that got lucky and was selected. The rest of the men had to settle for daily peaks of the child on deck. Baby saw it on deck. We'd have baby calls every day at 1400, and everybody would run to the hangar deck. I don't care how tough you think you are, but you, look, you could look into that kid's eyes, big blue eyes looking up at you, and he'd smile, and he'd melt the hardest heart on that ship. Sailors on other ships couldn't understand what seemed to be the new signals run up the halyards of the point crews. 
after the diapers were washed, we'd run them up on the halyard, which was the same place you ran the signal flags up to dry. And passing ships would sail by and look over and see our diapers flying from the yard arm, and they'd send a light signal over. We don't understand your signal. And our signalman would signal back as it baby sign on board. Dr. Keenan paid frequent visits to see the baby, eagerly anticipating the day he would be taking him home. Captain Hayward would continue to try to arrange safe passage for the little orphan into the United States. Really appreciate what We'll make it work. But there was still one major obstacle to overcome before baby George could leave the country. He'd need a passport. It was strictly against Korean government policy for a child born in Korea to leave its shores. And to appeal this law would take at least three years. The situation was becoming hopeless. But Sister Philomena had an ace up her sleeve. She knew that the South Korean official in charge of passports had a fondness for whiskey, cigars, and poker. And so she set up a little game. Father Riley was chosen to join Sister Philomena at the table. Father Riley was an accomplished poker player in his own right. Captain Hayward put up the stakes for the father. A bottle of whiskey, a box of cigars, and $200. At 4 o'clock on Saturday morning, a bottle of whiskey was gone, and the cigars were just about gone. And the South Korean pushed all of his money into the pot, which is approximately $200. And Father Riley called and took his pocket watch, it was a family heirloom, and put that into the pot for a raise. And the South Korean says, well, I don't have anything of equal value. And Father Riley says, well, you do. If you lose, you can give me a passport. If you win, you get it all. So the South Korean called. George's future was riding on this one hand. Father Riley was holding a pair of threes. The South Korean had a full house. The father drew three cards. Either it was the luck of the draw, or baby George had an angel watching over him. Because the father drew two more threes, and his four of a kind won the hand. So that's how we got the passport. With an official passport in hand, George was on his way to America. A Merry Christmas from Korea. He arrived in Seattle in December 1953 and into the loving arms of his new mother, Dr. Keenan's wife, Genevieve. Baby George was renamed Daniel Edward Keenan. Daniel after his grandfather and Edward for Father Edward Riley. The hardest part was having him leave the ship. When he left the ship, every man, it's what we call manning the rail. And I still get a little emotional even when I talk about it because he meant so much to us and he still does. Today, at age 44, Dan Keenan is a happily married man with two children of his own, none of which would have been possible without the help of the men on the USS Point Cruise. The ones who were mainly responsible for my being here, what happened to me was so unique. It took an incredible chain of events from the GI first finding me when I was abandoned, taking me to an orphanage, to having like someone like a father, Riley, who tells Captain Haywood and Captain Haywood broke every naval regulation in the book to Father Riley winging my passport in a poker game, you know, on and on and on. And anywhere along the line, that chain's broken. I'm not here today. It truly is a miracle. Everything that, that happened to me, just incredible.